Precipitation reactions. This is the sort of reaction we talked about with the laundry detergent. Sodium carbonate will um, remove dissolved magnesium and calcium ions by forming solids that precipitate from solution. In terms of the weather that you might see on television, what is precipitation? Rain, snow, sleet, hail. It's stuff falling from the sky, right? But not airplane parts. Just different forms of water falling from the sky. It's precipitating. It's falling. Usually when a precipitate forms, we, we observe that it seems to be falling. Sometimes it even looks like snow in a snow globe, and it's slowly falling to the bottom. So a precipitation reaction forms a solid that's called a precipitate upon mixing two aqueous solutions. So you mix two things that look like water, and it makes snow. Looks like snow. This is um, not white snow. I guess that would be yellow snow. I grew up in Minnesota. I know what yellow snow is. So um, here we have a potassium iodide solution. That's this one coming here through this, uh, probably a pipette or a burette. It looks like water. It's clear and colorless. And here we have lead nitrate solution. That's what's in this flask, also clear and colorless. As they mix, though, they form this bright yellow solid that wasn't there before. Here we have a color change and a solid forming. This is a chemical reaction. Mm -hmm. and that's a good question. How do you recognize that this is a solid? Mm -hmm. it be because it, it's opaque. You can't see through it. Mm -hmm. um, if we if we go back, go back to this one way at the beginning. This yellow. Oh, I didn't realize it was that far back. There it is. This, is, this solution is yellow, but you see you can see through it. It's transparent. It's clear. It's not colorless, but it's clear. When it becomes opaque or milky, the reason we can't see through it anymore is because there are little particles that are blocking the transmission of light. So if it becomes opaque, then you know there's a solid, even though, um, let's see if I can get back. No, nope, not that way. Yeah, I'm going to go the long way around. It's a good question, though. We can't see through it here. The reason it looks almost like a liquid here is because these are very tiny particles. But if we let this solution sit, we'll find that all the yellow particles eventually settle down to the bottom. Now, a precipitation reaction does not happen every time you mix two solutions of ionic compounds. Here we have potassium iodide and sodium chloride. Clear, colorless liquid, clear, colorless liquid. You mix them together, and you still have a clear, colorless liquid. Is this a chemical reaction? No, probably not. We can't tell, because we can't feel the screen, whether it was getting warm or cold. But there's no color change, there's no solid forming, there's no gas being given off. This isn't a chemical reaction. This is a physical change. It's just mixing. It's just mixing. So how do we predict whether a precipitation reaction will happen or not? We have to look at the possible products. It's only a precipitation reaction if you get a solid forming. The solids that form are insoluble ionic compounds. So we, what we have happening with precipitation reaction, we have two solutions. Those solutions have soluble compounds in them. And when we mix them together, we get at least one insoluble compound that forms. It precipitates and falls like snow to the bottom of the beaker. Let's look at a specific example. 
of the lead iodide and the potassium nitrate. So what happens when we mix these two solutions together? Let's look at illustrations of what these are before we mix them. Potassium iodide, here we have a beaker of water, it's got potassium ions and it's got iodide ions. And in lead nitrate, we have nitrate ions and we have lead 2 ions. And then when we mix this, we're going to see what happens. Immediately after mixing, we just have all these ions mingling together. I think of this in chemistry land like people going to a big party. Let's go back here. Um, I think of metals as being masculine and nonmetals as being feminine. I think I mentioned that to you guys before. And so this is a guy and a girl, and they're going to a party. It's not like they're like married or dating or anything. They're just going together because they don't want to show up alone. It's like socially awkward. And so over here, we have lead and nitrate, and they're going to the party together. And what happens is we get to the party, and everybody mixes around. Well, now potassium came with iodide, but now potassium is seeing nitrate, and he might think that nitrate is looking pretty good. Lead came with nitrate, they're friends, but you know, he doesn't have the hots for her, but he might think that iodide is mighty fine, right? So we're going to see what happens when these people meet each other. So what are the possibilities? So we could make a little table to see what might happen. So here we've got potassium and we've got lead and um, we've got iodide and we've got nitrate and a stylus that isn't happy. So this, this looks a lot like that nomenclature worksheet, doesn't it? Um, we could combine potassium and iodide and that could be a compound. We could combine potassium and nitrate. We could combine lead and iodide, or lead and nitrate. Now, it is important because of the charges. You have to have a positive charge and a negative charge because otherwise they're not going to stick together. So that's where my analogy breaks down a little bit, but just forgive that. So we have to have a plus and a minus to make a compound. So these are the four possible compounds. Two of these we can rule out as a precipitate because we know they were soluble. They came soluble, right? Potassium iodide was one of the reactants. That's not going to be the precipitate. So we can rule that one out. And lead nitrate is soluble also. We could rule that one out. So these are the possible new combinations. Are either of these insoluble? How do we know? We look at the chart. OK, I'll spare you going back to the chart. So if we go down the chart, the first line says that potassium compounds are soluble. So it's not this one. This one's soluble. That's going to be aqueous. Lead iodide. Iodide is in the third row, I think. And one of the exceptions is PB2+. This is a solid. So in my crazy chemistry land um, analogy, what happens here is that when lead and iodide get together, there's some serious chemistry. And they don't stick around in the party and mingle anymore. They're going to go off and find a quiet, dark corner, and they're going to be necking or doing whatever they do. They're out of circulation. That's the solid falling to the bottom of the beaker. It's not mixing around anymore. It is a crazy analogy, but it makes sense on some level. And you might remember it. I'm not done yet. See, here's the picture. So there's lead and iodide hanging out on the bottom of the beaker together. Very attracted to each other. The nitrate and the potassium 
They're just mingling at the party. That's all they expected to do. They're not disappointed or anything. They're just remaining in solution. Okay, done.